There's so much information about weight loss out there and so much of it contradicts each other. The truth is fat loss really isn't that complicated. It just gets made complicated mostly by people who are just trying to sell you something. So today I want to clear up that confusion by dispelling many fat loss myths and show you it's not as complicated as you may think. All right, you're a busy person, so let's just dive right in. And the first and biggest lie that you've been told is that you have to eat certain foods or you have to avoid certain foods in order to lose weight. If you really think about it, there's so many different diets with the name out there, and a lot of the times they contradict each other. But all of them can show you examples of people who have successfully lost weight. So why is this? It's because every diet in the world works by putting you in a calorie deficit it's just different ways of doing this. The keto and zone diet crowd will tell you that all carbs are evil and will make you fat. Then you have a diet called the ultra low fat diet, which has you consume about 80% of your calories from carbs. You have the carnivore diet, which is basically eating nothing but meat. And then you have vegans telling you that you should avoid meat. Which by the way, I understand that not all vegans necessarily do it as a weight loss tool and oftentimes can be for more ethical reasons, which I highly respect. Regardless, I'm telling you, no foods make you fat, no foods make you thin. It's all about the context of your overall diet. I'm not saying food quality doesn't matter, but it definitely doesn't trump your total calorie balance. Anyway, not only does looking at foods as either good or bad set you up with an unhealthy relationship with food and the all or nothing mentality so many people fall victim to, but there's so many examples both in science as well as anecdotally that show it's not about the exact foods. There was a large study that had over 600 people that lasted for a full year looking at higher carbs versus higher fat that showed no significant difference in weight loss between the two groups. There's several studies that have looked at both weight loss and health markers of high GI versus low GI carbs, which is basically your simple versus complex carbs argument, all of which showed no significant difference. There was even a study that matched macros and had one group eat 4% of their calories from sugar and the other group ate 44% of their calories from sugar. And once again, no significant difference in fat loss and as well as most health markers as well. Everyone likes to point to the Super Size Me documentary about the guy who gained all this weight eating nothing but McDonald's, but nobody talks about the guy that was nicknamed the McDonald's diet guy who lost over 60 pounds over six months eating nothing but McDonald's and once again saw improvements in all of his health markers. The difference? He controlled his calories. Now I could go on and on and there are several more examples of these people and if you're interested let me know in the comments and I will shoot you some more, but hopefully you're seeing the point that it isn't exact foods that make you fat. Now I'm in no way saying you should base most of your diet around junk food and sugar and fast food. I'm simply saying these examples clearly show that you can include these things in your diet and still see results. And let me also be very clear, if there's any type of diet with a name out there that you like and you can sustain, then that's great. Do what works best for you. But obviously all of these diets can't be the way and that's one of the biggest myths that's out there as well, is that there's only one way to get results. AKA the magical solution for you, AKA buy my product, this is gonna be the one that works for you, or perhaps the worst, the detoxes and quick fix schemes that just flat out do not work. Even supplements themselves have been blown way out of proportion. If you think about it, what do so many people do as soon as they start a diet? Okay, what supplements should I start taking? When the truth is, supplements are basically the least important thing of everything you can do. I'm not saying that there aren't any with any value. In fact, I'm a core nutritionals ambassador, so I know there's value in some supplements, but it's still, we're talking the last like 5%, if even, of what matters the most. Anyway, the truth is there's so many different ways to lose weight. And what's so important is finding something that's sustainable for you and making it a lifestyle. If you just do something to try to get the best results possible with no plan of how you're gonna come out, what are you gonna do to keep that weight off? And this might be one of the biggest reasons why most people gain the weight back when they're done dieting. Now, another huge lie about weight loss is that you either have to or shouldn't eat during certain times of the day. Like you must eat breakfast or you can't eat after 6 p.m. or you have to eat in a time restricted window. Or how about this one? You have to eat every couple hours to stroke your metabolism. Or there's even the extreme of the OMAD approach, one meal a day. You just eat one time and that's it. Again, there's examples of all these people who have seen results. So obviously eating every couple hours all day long versus eating just one time a day, both can't be the way to do it. 
The truth is it doesn't really matter how you space it out as long as your total macronutrient content for the day is the same, at least especially your total calories and your protein. If you don't believe me, check out this study that looked at eating three versus 14 meals per day, which showed no difference. If more or less meals per day really mattered, obviously there would have been a big difference there, but there wasn't. So however you prefer to eat is fine. Some people do better by eating a lot of small meals. Some people do better by eating less frequently. You know, things like intermittent fasting can be very helpful for a lot of people. There's nothing wrong with it. It's just not magic. By eating in any time restricted window, you therefore end up eating less calories and see better results. All right, this lie, some people might fight me on this and it might even trigger you a little bit, but hear me out. A huge lie is that simply getting older makes you fat. Sure, it's true, a lot of people tend to gain weight as they get older, but it's not simply aging that does it. Now, I was trying to find some research to help support this, and I was having a little hard time finding specific numbers, but I did find this that said men tend to lose about 5% of their RMR, or resting metabolic rate, per decade, and women 3% but it appears most of these slowdowns in metabolism is actually from losing lean body mass. And this other study showed we tend to lose about three to 8% of our muscle mass per decade. So clearly if you wanna minimize your slowdowns in metabolism when you get older, make sure you're consistently strength training to not only build, but keep your lean body mass. So anyway, while well, yes, your metabolism does slow down a little bit as you age, the majority of the weight we tend to gain as we get older can be explained by two different things. One, we tend to eat more and move less as we get older and activity makes a much bigger difference than most people think. A lot of people have found with lockdowns this year that they've been gaining weight a lot faster than usual, even if their nutrition stayed the same. And the reason for this is because instead of being up, moving around, going to their job, walking around during their daily life a lot, they're sitting at home, not moving around and burning a lot less calories. Two, the older we get, the longer history of dieting we likely have. And the longer and more extreme your dieting history is, the slower your metabolism will be and the easier it is to gain weight. The good news is it doesn't mean you're doomed and you can never lose weight again. I've worked with plenty of women in their 50s, even people in their 60s, even people in their 70s, even with a long history of dieting who are able to go through a good reverse diet, get their metabolism back in a better spot and see the success they're after. Okay, how about this next lie? More is better, extreme is better. In fact, I would go as far as to say a lot of people think self-deprivation is the key and you have to be miserable in order to get results. And man, when I think about this mindset, how could you possibly ever sustain results if you feel like the only way to do it is to completely overhaul your entire life and beat yourself into the ground while starving yourself? In what world are you gonna be able to keep doing that forever? But this is what we do. We go for the fastest possible results so we can get done as fast as possible and then go back. But if you've watched just about any of my other videos, you know that faster isn't better and is actually usually worse. Is all it does is make you lose weight early in the process faster, tank your metabolism, make the rest of the process much more difficult, make you feel miserable, hate the process, and end up giving up. Slower, more sustainable results may not be sexy, but they are the truth you need to come to terms with in order to lose the weight and keep it off. Which by the way, speaking of low calories, Another lie or myth that a lot of people believe in is that the only way you can possibly lose weight and keep it off is to stay on low calories for the rest of your life. But it's just not true. Now, yes, it is true that over time, your calories will continue to get lower as you need to see more results. But keep in mind, you want to eat as many calories as possible while seeing results so you can make adjustments as fat loss does plateau, which is basically inevitable. But that doesn't mean they need to stay down there forever. But what's missing from most people's plan is the diet after the diet. When you are done losing weight, whether it's because you've reached your goal or your body's just fighting you too hard or you're just over it, you need to do something called a reverse diet where you gradually increase your calories over time to get them back up again. The reason we do this is because after a cutting phase, your hormones are gonna be out of whack, your metabolism is gonna be running slow because your metabolism always adapts to whatever you do. So you're gonna be maintaining your weight on lower calories than you should, but if you just bring your calories straight back up again, your body can't handle it and you'll gain weight fast. 
by gradually increasing your calories, you give your body a chance to keep up with it. So you can increase your metabolism over time, help minimize the amount of fat you're gonna gain during the process, allow for more flexibility and balance in your life, which is something that's necessary to be able to keep doing this. Now you should be prepared to gain a little bit of weight during this process and understand that most people base their standard on whatever their lowest weight was, that's not gonna be realistic for most people. Understand there's a huge difference between gaining a small amount of weight back, which the first couple of pounds anyways, isn't even gonna be fat, it's gonna be things like water and glycogen, but there's a big difference between that and gaining all the weight back. Understand that weight maintenance isn't an exact number, it's more of kind of a range. All right, let's talk about lies about exercise when it comes to fat loss. How about this one? To lose weight, you should do nothing but cardio. In fact, maybe you believe that cardio has to be fasted. Well, both lies. No, I'm not saying that cardio is bad and you shouldn't do it. I'm just saying that cardio isn't the way to do things. And in fact, strength training is probably more optimal when it comes to fat loss because your body doesn't adapt to it quite the way it does with cardio. Cardio, the more you do, the more your body starts to adapt, the less calories you burn from the same amount of exercise and you just have to keep doing more and more all the time. Plus with especially steady state cardio, as soon as you're done with it and your heart rate returns to normal, you stop burning extra calories. Whereas with strength training, you get some afterburn effect where you continue to burn calories for the next day or two as your body recovers. Plus the more muscle you have, the faster your metabolism will be. So many people say, I'm just gonna do cardio until I lose the weight and then I'm gonna build muscle and that's completely backwards. Use strength training to help reach your goal, but also understand that weight and body fat are not one of the same. And as you build muscle, you're gonna to have to put a little weight on your frame because of that. But we're looking for body composition changes, not a number on the scale. As far as the fasted cardio argument, while yes, you do use more fat for fuel during the actual cardio itself when you're in a fasted state, but you then burn less fat later in the day and your net 24 hour difference is exactly the same. And research has shown as long as total cardio and energy intake is the same, it doesn't matter. I think what happens for a lot of people is by skipping that first meal and going into the exercise, they therefore eat less total calories and therefore see more fat loss. But that's from eating less calories, not because fasted cardio is magical. So once again, it comes down to preference. Some people just love fasted cardio. That's great, do it. If you don't like to do fasted cardio, there's no reason you have to. Now, another big misconception with exercise is that you need to do a lot of ab exercises to lose belly fat, but it just doesn't work that way. We don't spot burn fat. You will burn fat by being in a calorie deficit. The body's gonna choose to lose fat from wherever it wants. And there's some areas that lose faster, some areas that lose later and it's not uncommon for belly fat to be some of the last to go. So as you can see, a lot of what you've been told about weight loss just isn't true and it really doesn't have to be that complicated. It doesn't mean it's gonna be easy, it's not complicated. If you wanna know more about how to lose weight and keep it off forever, make sure you check out this top video next. If you found this video helpful, please share it with others and I'll see you next time.